All right, getting back to Santa Claus or Saint Nick. We left off. He's the patron saint of children, mariners, bankers, pawnbrokers, scholars, orphans, laborers, travelers. This guy's multitasking. Merchants, judges, paupers, marriageables, maidens, students, children, sailors, victims of judicial mistakes, captives, performers, even thieves and murderers. Match that with the children. Did you know that Saint Nick, Santa Claus, is the patron of thieves and murderers? How about thieves? A guy that comes in your house in the middle of the night down your chimney, not through the front door. And that's just to name a few. Patron. World English Dictionary. Now, number one. A person, especially a man, who sponsors or aids artists, charities, etc. A protector or benefactor. Number two. A customer of a shop, hotel, etc. Especially one. A regular one. Three. See Patriot Saint. Patriot Saint. Now, a singular... Excuse me. A saint regarded as a special guardian of persons, group, trade, country, etc. Origin. The word 1710 to 1720. So we make up religious words as we go. Which has nothing to do with nothing on the true word meanings. So remember the words that we were supposed to look at as we're doing as we've been revealing. What were they again? Catholic, priest, New York, tradition, image, and Coca-Cola. Catholic Church makes up things. You couldn't find Patriots, Patriot Saint anywhere in the Bible unless you got yourself a big pen and wrote it in yourself. But 66 books, Patriot Saint. That's not even in the Bible. But let's make it, and then let's make this guy murderers and thieves. Why? Because that's their own church. That's their own priest. They've been murdering true Bible-believing Christians throughout the, the ages. They've been stealing from the people. So St. Nicholas is our ambassador of our church. The Dutch, after Reformation, continued to celebrate St. Nicholas' feast day. Can you find that in Leviticus, a feast day? Let's see. There was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There was the Feast of Tabernacle. I don't recall the Feast of St. Nicholas. In the 1700s, the Dutch brought St. Nicholas to America. He was dead. Oh, you, you, oh the, 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 the image and the worship and the traditions. There's that word. 1300 years the story of Saint of Mr. Nicholas comes to America. The celebration of the death of a man who acts or deeds cannot be proven. Remember what we talked about number lesson number two? I want names, dates, and it in writing that I may take it to an honest law court and before a jury to see if it's guilty or not guilty. Getting to sound like a little like Satan Claus, doesn't it? This guy's not real. Mr. Nicholas is real, but the things that follow him by the church, Patriot Saint. Well, this wasn't while he was living. So you got the worship of dead people. First Corinthians eleven twenty three to twenty six. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and he was given, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread, and drink this cup, 
ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Here is the only Bible reference to honoring someone who has died as a feast day. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, are you going to tell me that this Mr. Nicholas, this Santa Claus, is not an antichrist? Don't you leave a drink and bread out for Mr. Claus? Milk and cookies? Uh-huh. You know what milk is in the Bible? It's the nourishment of the word for a newborn babe in Christ. This guy, you leave milk and cookies, he is stolen from the word. But Jesus Christ is no longer dead. Uh-oh, we got a problem. St. Nick is dead. He is alive and at the right hand of the Father, God. Where do you find Paul, Peter, even Jesus celebrating any person's death by a feast? Moses, Joshua, there is none. It is an honor of a man and not God to do so. Honoring a dead person. Jesus is said to be the only one which is to be honored. Matthew 8, 22, But Jesus said to him, Follow me. Let the dead bury the dead. Exodus 20, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Leviticus 20, verse 3, And the soul that sinneth, and the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, and to go whoring after them, I will set my face against that soul and will cut him off from his people. Deuteronomy 8, 9-12 When thou comest into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. They shall not be found among you. Anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or a zerber of times, or a chanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter of the familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all these do these things are abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, Lord thy God does drive them, the Gentiles, out before thee. First Chronicles 10, 13. So Saul, Saul, di Saul died. I'm in a problem today, sorry. For Saul died in his transgression, in which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. Mr. Nicholas is dead. He's got a crypt. He's got this manna. He's a sealed tomb, they say. That's what they say. But he's dead. In the spirit of Mr. Nicholas, 2016, there are children who will still write letters and pray to this dead saint which I just read over and over and over, it's an abomination. Oh, my children don't pray to, they ask. When you ask, that's a pray. That's prayer. You know, the Bible says, I pray that you let, please let me go. I pray that you let me. Prayer is asking. And if Santa Claus is in Mr. Nicholas, then you are writing, seeking, observing, having pictures and icons, and seeking when you go to his little area at the mall or the store, a dead man. And we're called upon to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, who had died, yes. Jesus Christ died according to Scripture. He was buried. He arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And forgive me, I, my, my tongue is not working. Deuteronomy 8, 9 to 12. 18, 9, Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 12. When thou art come to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. America should not have allowed the Dutch to celebrate the dead. Mr. Nicholas. I remember I said, I'm calling him Mr. Nicholas. I ain't calling him a saint. I don't know if he's a saint. I'm a saint by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm alive. Catholic churches, I mean, we'll get to the saints later, but America said, hey, you keep that dead man in his in his tomb. 
Don't you bring him over here. He's dead. What if I came over to your house and brought a dead body? Huh? What if I dug up the, the dead body of my wife lying in a cemetery? And hey, how you doing? Me and my wife are. Uh, uh. You say that's disgusting. But they brought Mr. Nicholas to America. He's dead. Well, they didn't bring him. No, they didn't bring him physically. They brought him spiritually. And that's just as worse. You know, every round, every time, a certain time of the year, you see his. Yeah, see? But they did not. But they did. They did bring Mr. Nicholas, and he comes. Boy, I'm having a hard day. But they did, and here comes Santa everywhere. They brought Nicholas in. Right after Nicholas, along with Nicholas, Satan came. It was a Dutch elm disease, wasn't it? And it is even in the very church, Bible-believing churches today, Santa Claus. Guaranteed. I guarantee you go into any Bible-believing church and there's someone's kids in there that have to do with Mr. Nicholas. Somewhere. Known to the Dutch as Sint Nicholas. S-I-N-T. N-I-K-O-L-A-A-S by the nickname Sinterklaas S-I-N-T-E-R-C-K-L-A-S-S -S. He is known as a gift giving saint by the Dutch. Again, Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God you knew I was going to throw scripture in there. Is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians 2 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Let me say to Mr. Wait a minute. Let me say something to Mr. Claus. On the gift it says to man or woman from Santa Claus to my little boy from Santa Claus to my little girl from Santa Claus he has stolen the name of God when it comes to gifts and church and religion he is known as the gift giving saint for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in Mr. Nicholas and the tradition set by the people and the Dutch has transformed, I use that word very biblically, has transformed Mr. Nicholas into an anti-God, anti-Jesus Christ. Because there's only one God that gives gifts, and it's not Mr. Claus. I'm going to start calling him Mr. Claus. But Mr. Nicholas is a gift-giving saint as Mr. Claus. He stole the credit from God. Sailors claiming Saint Mr. Nicholas as a patron carry story stories of his favor and protection far and wide. Mr. Nicholas's chapels were built in many seaports. Um, Paul went around the seaports and built churches, house churches, Corinth, he fit Ephesus, Thessalonica. I don't read anywhere where those people built a church to this to Paul. Now here's a dead man that sailors are erecting churches in his honor, never mind Jesus Christ or God. Maybe that's how he does it. Maybe he's got all these little checkout, little Home Depots kind of places all over the world, his chapel. He stops off and loads up his sleigh and then moves on to the next place. Paul went to the seaports with the gospel. This guy goes to the seaport and builds 
churches, chapels. For which church? Oh, come on, come on. Third lesson, what church? The Roman Catholic Church, which is nothing biblical, nothing in the Bible stands, nothing but traditions of the hierarchy. So these chapels built for St. Nicholas, St. Nicholas Chapel, are built for the Roman Catholic Church and traditions. You wouldn't find a gospel in those churches. If it's convenient that the first four disciples were sailors and fishermen. Oh. So as Jesus had fishermen following him, Antichrist Claus has fishermen following him. So he's an antichrist in that he he's a gift, gift bearing. He gives the gift, so he's anti God. Now he's got fishermen following him. And as far as Mr. Nicholas, they will reverse him and make him Santa Claus. And turn him into Jesus Christ and Antichrist. Mr. Nicholas Santa Claus will be an imitation replica of Jesus Christ. You got to watch the watchwords and phrases now on. Sailors claim that there are mermaids, half naked women, half fish. So does Hollywood. There have been movies. You know, the lower half is a fish and you can see the breasts of a woman in the movies. Seamen are known for sea stories. Sea chanting. They go out months and months and months. You know, the old fish story, the whopper. They once said that the world was flat. They once said there was a dragon in the ocean. And they were all dead wrong. That Leviathan is above our head, not in the Atlantic or Pacific or Indian. So maybe they were wrong again about Mr. Nicholas. If you tell one lie, how am I supposed to believe you in the truth? One lie ruins your, cre your credibility. So if you believe there are half-naked women that look like fish, and it's a lie that has never been proven. Now you're going to tell me about this man, Mr. Nicholas. I'm not going to believe you. But it's recorded. Why don't you make him the patron saint? Not only thieves and murderers, what about liars? That'd be a good one to add to it. So, Nicholas was so widely reverend that thousands of churches were named for him. Well, if you're going to talk about the church of the Bible, let's talk about the Bible for a minute. Step away from the Roman Catholic. If you're going to build any church on, on what the Bible says, on salvation by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone upon the gospel, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, any church that is built upon the blood of Jesus Christ and God, Acts 20, 28, that church is built in the honor and in the body for the bride of Christ. It's not stones, wood. Now, this is talking about stones, wood, brick, and all that. But I'm talking about what the Bible says. Let's get with the Bible. Anybody who, who gets in the church by Jesus Christ are for Jesus Christ. We are his bride. Now, Nicholas was so widely reverent that thousands of churches were named for him. He got rid of Jesus Christ. Including 300 in Belgium, 34 in Rome, 23 in the Netherlands, and more than 400 in England. 
So there's no name of Jesus Christ. There's the name of Mr. Nicholas, who will transform to Santa Claus, who will reveal his true identity at the, at the great white throne judgment as Satan. How many churches are named for Jesus Christ? How many Catholic churches are named for Mary? I would assume, and this is an assumption, but I would assume that at least one church in every state, in the 50 states of America, would have one Catholic church named for Mary. I'm going to assume that. Because th there's a Catholic church in here at Daytona Beach has Mary. Where I grew up in New London County, there was a church in New London, Mary. So I'm going to assume that at least one Mary church in all the 50 states. I'm going to assume that. But though we have a state, a Roman Catholic state in the Union called Jesus Land. No, wait a minute. That's wrong. Mary Land. Hey, Mary's got one in the 50 states. Find me a state named Jesus. Come on, I'm waiting. What would be the capital of the state of Jesus? Find me a, a, a capital that says God. Come on, I'm waiting. We're a Christian godly nation. Prince upon the principles of the Bible. We're the state of Jesus. Why we got Mary state, but we don't have a Jesus state? By the end of the 1400s, Mr. Nicholas was the third most popular religious figure after Jesus and Mary, he went above the popularity of Jesus and even Mary. That says a lot when you talk about the Roman Catholic Church. You don't mess with Mary to the Roman Catholics. Mary is the bee of all the bees of all the known of the heavens. There are prayers to Mary, not Jesus. And Mr. Nicholas rose above that. And with Ronald McDonald in the entire known world today. He's right up there with Ronald McDonald. Ronald McDonald, he's gone. He, he, that's a dying icon. But Mr. Nicholas isn't. There are more than 2,000 chapels and monasteries named after him. Well, he's growing popular in the 1400s. He's a, his name is more known than Jesus. And yet the Bible says in the, in, the God, in the book of Acts, there is no name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And that name is not Nicholas. That name is not Santa Claus. That name is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. He's more popular. It says something about the Roman Catholics, right? Among their church, Nicholas is more popular than Jesus Christ. That probably holds true for 2016. There were more than 2,000 chip. Oh, okay, I read that. After Mary, he, Mr. Nicholas, is the second most pictured saint by artists. You've seen pictures of Jesus. There are more pictures of Mary. And there are more pictures of Mr. Nicholas, and every time this year you'll find him on a Coca-Cola bottle. You don't even see Mary on Coca-Cola. You see St. Nicholas, Mr. Claus, Mr. Nicholas. How's that? Numbers 3352. You knew I was going to do scripture. Then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. Ezekiel 23, 14, and that she increased her whoredoms, for when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, and the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, Webster's 1828 dictionary, vermilion, is a dye red. To color 
with delicate red. Well, that's an interesting color, Ezekiel. Red. And red is the color of Santa Claus. Look at the transformation we've gone from Mr. Nicholas to Santa Claus in the church that Jesus pukes over and will cast into hell the hierarchies, the popes, and the bishops, and the nuns, and the priests, unless they had believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, their faith and their works are placed upon the church and the doctrine. They'll be burned in the lake of fire, but looky here. Look how Ezekiel is now even pointing us even closer to St. Nick, Santa Claus, Satan. In the spring of 1087, sailors from Barari succeeded in spiriting away, spiriting away the bones of Mr. Nicholas, bringing them to Barari, a seaport on the southeast coast of Italy. <laughs> look at look at the Catholics show up here. An impressive church was built over St. Nicholas's crypt. Many faithful journey to honor the saint. So they stole the bones of their gods. What was that guy in Judges? You stole my god. You stole my Eva. You stole my priest. Oh man. What kind of god you got if you can be stolen? That's a weak god. In the, in the Old Testament, then, Israel loses the battle. I mean, Israel wins the battle. They start going picking up the enemy's dead gods. Oh, look at these gods. They lost the battle. They're no good. So they steal the bones of this guy. Never mind what we read about numbers. You're not supposed to touch a dead body because you'll be unclean. I wonder if they had manna. So over this crypt at this manor now, they build a impressive church that many come to this church faithfully to honor Jesus Christ. No, to honor Mr. Nichols. Well, I'll be. Now he's worshipped. Now there are, uh, <coughs> now there are journeys. There are pilgrimages. That's what I'm trying to say. There are pilgrimages to Mr. Nicholas. No Bible believer or saint of God returned to no one's grave. For the women that visited Jesus' tomb, the burial ceremony was not finished. When they came to Jesus' tomb, they brought burial material because they did not finish because the, the, the Sabbath had come upon that night. They were coming to finish the burial of Jesus. They were not coming to honor the dead. They weren't even coming to the resurrected Christ. They wanted to finish the job that was left unfinished. They had to hurry and wrap his body and tomb him to continue the feast of the Passover. But they didn't come to worship Jesus' body in a tomb, even though his body was not there no longer. 2 Kings 23, 13-16 And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the mountain, of corruption which Solomon the king of Israel had built for Ashtoreth the abomination of the Zidon and Chemish the abomination of Moabites and Milcom the abomination of the children of Ammon did the king defile and break in pieces the images and cut down the groves and filled the places with bones of men moreover the altar that was at Bethel at the high place with Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, 
had made both the altar and the high place, he break down, burned the high place, stamped it small to powder, and burned the grove. These are Roman Catholic words. I'm. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchers that were there in the mount, and sent and took the bones out of the sepulcher, and burned them upon the altar, and polluted it. According to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Josiah cleansed the land. He didn't worship the dead man. It said he took the bones. Out. These were the bones of the defiled priests that went after these following gods. Who were priests of these gods, small g. He took them, he burned them, he and he said, you know what, that altar that's over there that they're worshiping on, if I take dead man's bones and put it on that altar, that altar is defiled. So when they took and stole the bones of Mr. Nicholas and built over his crib a church, according to the Bible that these pilgrimages are coming to this person's church, According to the Bible, you notice how I'm reading you Bible scripture, and I'm not quoting you no scripture in the life of this man. That impressive church that they said is defiled by the Bible. Josiah did this to cleanse the land, not to worship the dead man. This was prophesied earlier by a man of God, 1 Kings 13. Notice again, now we're talking about dead man bones. Sailors have a flag with dead man bones. Aye, matey. And you want to get a patch for the pirates. Oh, you didn't have to say that. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. You're going to pick anybody character to teach children about the about a Christian life. Why don't you pick Bible characters in the Bible? I don't care about your story. That's your personal story. That's a wonderful story. But let's get the kids back in the Bible, okay? Through the centuries, Mr. Nicholas has continued to be recognized by Catholics and Orthodox and honored by the Protestants. Now, the Protestants are just the daughters. Of the Catholic Church they are not Baptists Baptists are not Protestants and Protestants are not Baptists Protestants are just Catholics with a few rules to be changed and I also wonder how many Bible believing Christians oh I had to throw that one in there too didn't I over the centuries mr. Nicholas has continued to be recognized by Catholics and Orthodox and honored by Protestants and I wonder how many Bible believing Christians. I would assume one in every church somewhere. Maybe that's too much. Protestants are Reformed Catholics. They moved away from the Catholic Church. They tried to clean the Mother Church. The Protestants hold the same traditions and teachings, traditions, and creeds Minus and add a few like E did in Genesis 3. <laughs> I'm having fun. I hope you are too. I probably turned many people off already. Probably, you know, I'm gonna, oh, what's this about? And then probably five minutes. They don't even get that far. Only a true Bible person who studied to show thyself approved under God and workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly divine the word of truth it's gone this far 34 minutes somebody who wants the tr truth who really wants to know what's going on is gone 34 minutes a true dedicated Catholic has turned this off a long time ago somebody gets offended very easily wouldn't even start the video or the audio uh, obeying Jesus words to sell what you own and give the money to the poor Nicholas used his whole inheritance to assist the needy the sick and the suffering well, that sounds good okay he was a kind considerate man 
But to base your entire life on what, what Jesus said on that? Okay. But there's one problem. There's no proof. There's no record. There's no names. There's absolutely zilch evidence. It's just said. I don't know if it's practice. I don't know if it's the truth or not. He said he, he allowed people to call him a miracle worker. He, he allowed people to believe that he saved the city from famine. So I'm supposed to believe this? Matthew 19, 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Oh, let's read the whole passage, Matthew 19, 16 to 22. Let's get the whole passage. And behold, one came and said to him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but God. That is God. There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Works. Jesus has not died on the cross yet. When it, this is being read, I mean, when this is being written, Matthew 19. Jesus is going to the cross. He's not on the cross. So Mr. Nicholas is, is in an Old Testament teaching of works and faith. Faith and works. That's good. That won't get you to heaven. Only by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ will you get to heaven. And as I said, I have found nowhere, anywhere, this documented, this guy ever receiving Christ as his Savior. But he's sure taking the honor and the glory thereof. He said, which thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Oh, this guy is a patron saint of the thieves. This guy is a patron saint of the murderers. Remember I read that to you? So he's going to jump to Matthew 19. He's going to take a, a part of scripture out of context. Say, I'm going to sell all I got and live for the Lord and... But you stood up and you protected the murderers. You protected the thieves. And you those are your followers. Where was that? Thou shalt not bear false witness. He's been lying all along. Not once did he disprove anything said about him. So he's going to take his life verse out of Matthew 19, 21, and he can't even follow Matthew 19, 16 to 22. So you see, when we lay down the truth, there is no truth in this guy. Like someone taking a, a verse out of Philippians 4. Uh, is that the... Uh, that you better read the entire contents. I can do all things through Christ who strength. Yeah, but what's the contents? This guy lost the contents of the scripture. Honor thy father and mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said to him, All these have I kept for my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, Ooh, I want to be perfect. See, you read as a Catholic, oh, I'm 100%. No. That's never 100% in the Bible. Now, see, now we're going to take up the verse. Thou will be perfect. Mr. Nicholas said that, oh, I want to be perfect. I want to be 100%. Go and sell all that thou hast and give unto the poor. And thou shalt have the treasure in heaven. Oh, he claimed that. Come and follow me. He stopped at the treasure in heaven. I'll sell everything I got. And doesn't follow Jesus Christ. How do you know he didn't follow Jesus Christ? Look what we read so far. Seven pages. Eight right now. 
When the young man heard these sayings, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Jesus was not talking to Mr. Nicholas. He was talking to the rich young ruler. In all three places in the gospel, it shows with this young man. Mr. Nicholas was not Jewish. Again, a Roman Catholic Church event. Stealing from the nation of Israel and applying it to self. Jesus was talking to a Jewish man. Nicholas, that's me. And that's honoring his church. Um, the Jews that were saved in the book of Acts sold possession to help the church. Fellow Christians. This guy was just giving out his money in any old cause, any old cause. You didn't care if they give the money to go buy booze and cigarettes and all that. I just gave it out. I don't think Peter, James, John, or even Paul would spend it all on toys as Santa Claus does. Ooh. And let's see. Let's try to finish these two paragraphs, then we'll be at a new subject. Okay, Mr. Nicholas helped the poor. That's that's so good. I helped the poor sometimes. He was a thoughtful man. His deed is used to promote the Santa Claus image. It is used to sanctify and make a saint of his works. Ephesians 2 and 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works. At least any man should boast. Man, he's blown that whole verse. He has twisted that whole verse around to fit his life. The Catholics have twisted that verse around to promote Santa Claus. To misuse scripture to prove one's point is a sin and must be addressed. The story of Jesus Christ and the rich young ruler. The quote is what Jesus said and is not applicable to the story of Santa Claus. Now somebody said, hey, wouldn't it be great if we threw this verse in here about Saint uh, Mr. Nicholas? And they'll think, hey, it's so Bible. Isn't it so great to be Bible? But there's a whole bunch more. That's, no, we won't put that scripture in there. We'll just put the good part. Who's going to be in their right mind going to look at the whole content? No one's going to look at the whole content. Because if they look at the whole content, they'll see that this guy's really a liar and we're a liar. But no one's ever going to read their Bible. No, because it's set upon the traditions of the church and what the church says. And the church says, put your Bible away. Don't read it. I just read to you the scripture implies this guy and we found this guy and the church to be false when you look up poor and sell in the Bible this is what you get Leviticus 25 47 oh we're looking at scripture now if a sojourner or a stranger wax rich by thee and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of a stranger's family. Amos 8 6. That we may buy the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. Matthew 19 21. And Jesus said to him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Remember, we already did that verse. Mark 10, 21. And Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said to him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, Mr. Nicholas, and follow me. No, I just want Jesus loving me. I don't want the cross. I'll cut the cross and follow Jesus out. I'll sell my stuff to the poor and Jesus will love me. Notice how they cut out following Jesus. They cut out the cross. And yet during the dark histories, how many Bible-believing, born-again Christians did they kill upon crosses? 
Nero was killing Christians on crosses. Luke 18.22 Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. He loved that. Come follow me. He didn't want that. It was not addressing Mr. Nicholas. Jesus told Peter to fish for a, for a fish for tax money. Would I be so stupid to go and proclaim that for myself? Stop, what are you doing with a fishing pole? Oh, it's April 15th. Yeah, I'm going to go down and catch some tax money. It's in the Bible. I'd be a fool. You think I was a fool to proclaim that, but you just take these words of a Catholic. Oh, it's got to be fine. Yay. Um, 2 Timothy 2.15, we'll stop. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This guy has become such a character. We are at page 8 of 45. Right now, I've raised the question. Right now, it should be really demand. Christian, and this is this is for Christian. Why are you allowing this guy, St. Nick, Mr. Nicholas, Santa Claus, into your Christian home? And there's more. There's more there is more scripture to follow. <coughs> Why? He has no place in a Bible-believing Christian's home, especially among your, your children. 